Do you want to talk about X-Men? <laughs> yes, I do. Does it seem like the consensus is that this is a wonderful show? Yeah. So we're talking about X-Men 97. It's yes. a show on Disney+. Plus. It's supposed to be a revival, a sequel to the original 90s show. Yeah, so everyone Twitter is like sharing gifts of Cyclops being a badass. He's he, they, they really are like, they're doing Cyclops justice. Look how badass he is. They're like, he's been a cuck boy for too long and now he's awesome. When I work at the help desk, Kyle and I used to always go, uh, Gene? <laughs> 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 Anytime like, you know, something would startle us, we go, Gene. 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 Where's Gene? Gene. 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 Gene, what's wrong? Gene, 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 Yes, Cyclops? He's always so concerned about it. Gene? So the yeah, the action scenes, they did seem like they put a lot of effort into those scenes specifically. Yeah, my first exposure to it was the new intro. It tries its best to just redo the original. It strikes me as like a like a student animation project that's like I, you know, for my project, I'm going to recreate the X-Men intro. Yes. Yeah, it's like a it would be like a fan YouTube video that yeah. you'd see like, oh, that's cool. They like did it in like a newer style. OK, Mike Matei redoes TMNT using Mario Paint, for instance. <laughs> so I, I do want to say I've never seen the 90s original. Mm. Not one episode. <laughs> Not one episode. Uh, I was more of a DC uh, Batman kind of person. I watched the original Batman show and I watched Batman Superman Adventures and the Superman show. And for some reason, like the Marvel shows, I totally missed all of them. I didn't watch Fantastic Four, Iron Man or Spider-Man. I didn't watch any. Because well, it, would, it would have been on like Fox Kids or something, right? Or but so was it? Batman. And Superman. It was uh, what? Or Superman. Well, Batman went to WB Kids eventually, but it, it started on Fox. I think that's where I, I saw the Batman stuff on WB, I think. It's fun sometimes to think about, like, what are the major inspirations for what would become the massive superhero box office? You know, a lot of people point to X-Men 2000 as being the like a Genesis moment. I did see those when they came into the theater. It was a big mm-hmm. deal. And I was like, oh, these are these are neat. Pretty good casting. Like Hugh Jackman was kind of a revelation. And, you know, Magneto and it, like Charles Xavier. It was almost like fan casting with Patrick Stewart. But I, I don't think that movie comes out and does well without this cartoon show, this Absolutely. 90s X-Men cartoon show. So, you know, because comics, they have their fans, but they've never been a, a, a broad, broad appeal where lots of millions of people are reading comic books. Like, you know, I don't think that's ever really been the case. It's always been like a movie or an adaptation that kind of gets people into it. This show is a Saturday morning show. And for those who don't know, Marvel wanted to do an X-Men cartoon show and they did a pilot that you can see online called Pride of the X-Men where Wolverine is Australian. You left before I could properly welcome you. Welcome her. Wait, she's not torn in the X-Men, is she? She's just a kid. Stan Lee, you know, hello, S- spider friends. He, like, opens the show. This is Stan Lee of Marvel Comics warning you to look around you, your classmates, your friends. You never know which one of them may be a mutant. And the theme song is pretty sick. It's not anywhere near dun-dun-dun, dun-dun-dun. It's not, it's not like that, but it's like a... X-Men, X-Men, lead the way, lead the way. X-Men, X-Men, coming your way. X-Men, X-Men, coming your way. Magneto's foes are on the way to pillage, burn, and plunder. But there's one team that will not yield the team that strikes like thunder. Uh, it's one episode. It's and the animation is actually pretty great. Wolverine's in like his brown costume, you know, and yeah, he's like, oi. 
Oi, bub. Get with it. The X-Men don't have room for whiny brats. I actually have the making of X-Men, the animated series. This is a beautiful, oh, nice. you get to see like all this concept art and every time they introduce new characters, it's like such a cool fucking book. Yeah, I would catch it on Saturday mornings, specifically season one, because season one covered Night of the Sentinels, which was like a really very dramatic piece of children's entertainment. They decide to like raid a government building for like mutant classified documents, the Sentinel program. They want to understand or stop the Sentinel program and they're ambushed by Sentinels who kills one of them. Very surprising. Of course he's back. We all know these. <laughs> or they, they are <laughs> I think Morph comes back like in season two or something. It's, it's this deeply dramatic thing where it kind of cuts away after the death and then it smash cuts to they all arrive back at headquarters and everybody is just silent and like not talking to each other. And Wolverine like punches Cyclops in the fucking stomach. He blames Cyclops for what happened and he like rips apart Cyclops' car and like goes for a drive. He's like, tell Cyclops I made him a convertible. Oh, cowards! Oh, Wolverine! And then they did Days of Future Past is what, you know, later that season. And yeah, Beast uh, is imprisoned for the first episode and and like stays that way for like a season. They did the Phalanx storyline, which, you know, you see featured in um, X-Men 2, the Clone Wars Sega Genesis game. They, have, they did the Phoenix Saga. I remember them marketing the Phoenix Saga like many Saturdays in a row. That was when they went like very cosmic with the whole show. They had Captain America pop up. They did do uh, crossovers with Spider-Man and Fantastic Four. Nightcrawler never really appeared in the show, but he did. there was like one episode where I think he convinces Wolverine to follow Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm dead serious, man. I'm not, like, I'm not even like interpreting it. My pain drove me to seek God. Yours drove you away. Don't tell me about God. <laughs> He's like a German Catholic. And, and Wolverine is like secular and he like, he shares the word with him. <laughs> uh, there's, there's a storyline they won't now do I, anymore. Now that I remember that, I got to go back and watch that. I don't want to follow no Jesus, bub. So yeah, when, when I heard that they were going to do like, we're going to just sequelize X-Men from the 90s. I guess in the vein of like when they, they revitalized Tiny Toons, Animaniacs, Beavis right. and Butthead, where the, the conceit is we're going to kind of pretend the show never went off the air. Yeah, like some elements will be different. We'll have some different voice actors. Some people have passed, whatever. It, of course, the animation style will be different because we do this all with computers now. But... This is for, this is a continuation for the fans of the original. And of course, they're all kind of soft reboots in a sense where you have to expect that new generations will be finding it. So it's kind yeah. of its own thing, kind of not its own thing, you know? Uh, yeah, I, my only exposure to the X-Men's, like I saw it was in the arcades, the fighting game too, and then there's Marvel versus Capcom. Then I saw the movies and then that's about it. And, the, and you know, the movies cover a lot of ground. I've always said, um, if you're going to watch the X-Men movies, my machete order, you know, because there, there's, I think there's a lot of good X-Men content in those movies, but there's a lot mm. of bad as well. So I would say... Start with X-Men First Class as like your mm -hmm. opening X because I think it's a better opening X-Men movie than X-Men 1, personally. I think X-Men 1 didn't really age that great. And then go to X2. So that would be your introduction to Wolverine and the Weapon X program. You don't need X-Men Origins Wolverine. You got it's all there in X2 and it's way better. I think that's like a very like full X-Men movie. And mm -hmm. Magneto is introduced in X-Men First Class, so now he comes back as kind of like an ally, kind of a foe should work and then i think you can jump over to days of future past which i think is awesome i think it's a great movie actually like one of my favorite x-men movies and then yeah because now now you've tied the first two together and mm -hmm. then i think like finish it off with logan those are the good movies <laughs> Yeah. And I, I don't I don't think you miss anything. I think that I think no. that tells a complete story. But yeah, the cartoon. One thing that stuck out in my mind is just the inconsistency of the animation styles. Like it's a whiplash. I would say it's whiplash where like a show like Invincible. It's kind of in the similar like vein. The styles consistent between the action scenes and the talking scenes. And it's not as disorienting where like the. Action scenes look really good. Like some of the action scenes in this X-Men 97, look, it's like some of the best animation I've seen in a while. Yeah. And then when they get to the talking scenes, it's like jarring. It's like some the, sometimes it's like low frame rate. <laughs> sometimes like some of the characters are low frame rate. Sometimes they do like these the cl like super close ups of their faces all the time. And I think and that's just to like you make it easier to animate because you don't have to do you don't have to show much of the background you can just have their face like talking, but you do need lip the lip sync to look halfway decent. And they're totally, 
they don't even try. For an old friend has challenged me to remember this. I remember thinking no. when, like, when the henchmen were fighting the X-Men, like the bigots or whatever, and they were like, get out of <laughs> here, mutant, or whatever, you know, like that voice, whatever that voice is. I'm like, did they get the same extras from the original show? <laughs> the same people to be like, we don't want any mutants. <laughs> or whatever. Like, always the same guys. Um, uh. I was also wondering, like, if if cost was an issue, like, what don't you think like a movie of this would have made more sense? Yeah, an animated yeah. like call call it X Men ninety seven, do like a streaming movie. Yeah, like the yeah the of the WB movies and yes, the, exactly yeah, the Mortal Kombat movies, something like that. And then you don't have to carry around this conceit that like oh no, like we're gonna keep this thing going for a while. Um, with our fired uh, showrunner who's been on. Oh, the yes, yes. There's, yes, yeah, so that controversy. Where, but he was he was fired. And I, the only thing I found was like a Looper article that was like, he was hard to work with. And also his OnlyFans was was disturbing to the, to Disney. <laughs> so he has an OnlyFans account. <laughs> he was banned he, from <laughs> he was banned from set for disruptive wokeness. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's definitely not the case. You know, the elderly actors are very distracting for me. Um mm-hmm. Cause like, you know, like take rogue, for example, like she doesn't sound that different, but she sounds different. She sounds like, no. like what's going on, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yes. We've rodeoed more sentinels than I care to count. And Storm and Bishop are made of sterner stuff than you think. Or, or Wolverine like just has, he's like, you know, the, the appeal Sorry. of that voice was, that it kind of was a high register and a low register. It was like, you know, uh, I finally feel at peace, bub. <laughs> and now it's like, hey, Bob, stop talking my ear. At least I won't have to listen to your flapping mouth anymore. Jeez, Dad, keep buzzing in my ear. It doesn't sound quite right. Um, <laughs> I, have, I have no frame of reference for any of these, but. <laughs> well, you, pro- you, you, you probably remember Wolverine's voice from Marvel vs. Capcom, like claw, claw, or whatever, whatever he says. Rogue's voice definitely sounds off like even yeah. like just it sounds like a strange strange coming out of that style <laughs> of per- like well yeah that that's i agree it, there, there's kind of like an incongruence between you know it's a little more anime-ish now and it's i think like 30 percent more dramatic and i know i already established like the original was pretty dramatic this is like quite a bit more dramatic i would say mm-hmm. like they've leaned all the way in and now, like those cartoon voices, like the Wolverine voice and the rogue voice and the Gambit voice, these are always like not your, not the most naturalistic, um, oh, yeah. uh, uh, you know, performance driven voices on the original cartoon. And so to have them like in long winded dialogue sequences with one another, they yeah. go on quite a while because there's no commercials because the commercial, the Saturday morning cereal commercials and toy commercials used to break this thing up. Keep it brisk. Keep it moving. Yeah. Now like Cyclops and Jean can like fuck around in a kitchen for like 10 minutes being like the professor told us he would give the X-Men to us, but it is just not the same to not have the professor here. <laughs> I know Scott, but he, you are the leader that we always wanted you to be. Wolverine might not like you right now, but he'll like you eventually. Hey, what's going on sugar i thought i was joined you in the sugar kitchen sugar bear sugar bears after my golden crisp cereal can't get enough of that golden crisp I, I, I there was some sequence like wolverine's watching tv and gene comes in he's like she's like what's going on on the tv and he's like well bub uh magneto is being held and this that and the other like they're just like <laughs> shoe leathering like crazy this thing used to have commercials i think the commercials are necessary bring them back i mean it's it's fine like I've, there's definitely worse things on disney plus and i there oh, yeah. were the action sequences i think are very worth it if you are a fan of x-men and want to see them do cool badass stuff and pretty good animation um, I, I, I mean, I, this, this, uh, I don't, this isn't really doing anything for me for s- story wise, but then again, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of the original, so I'm definitely not the target audience. So uh, in theory, you could like an X-Men show, you know, they're oh, yeah. X-Men, I'm, X-Men's cool. And then, you know, like there are cool aspects to it. Like we have the whole Magneto inheriting the school and that's a good hook. Xavier's gone magneto's the new guy i think that that's probably the most intriguing story element there's a problem with it which is you can tell that the writing staff are fans i i get the impression of violent militant activism (laughs) and magneto fits the bill and so 
at, maybe at one time he would have been an anti-hero or a sympathetic villain, you know, maybe more accurately. Now he's just straight up. They just love this dude. They make him really sexy. <laughs> sexy grandpa. 90-year-olds. For all this talk of reducing the, the sex appeal on Rogue's butt, I think there's sex appeal all over this thing. I mean, Gambit can't put his abs away. Yeah, everyone's naked. Yeah, Jean Grey's crying. And then there's this weird shot of Storm, like, eyeing her. And I was just like, whoa, is, is, is they, are, they, are they sexing each other up? What's going on? It's like, oh, no, there's having a heart to heart, but it just seems so steamy. So for some reason, <laughs> Morph kind of looks like he, he has a little bit of that kind of like androgynous Pee Wee Herman sexuality. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? And I'm actually fine with the horniness because uh, given like how like sterile like Star Wars was when it's like Sabine and Ezra were like, our relationship is very brother and sister like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> high five. <laughs> These X-Men are not high fiving each other. They're getting each other wet. <laughs> <laughs> Living all in the same house. Yeah. Like uh, Rogue likes Magneto apparently. And then Gambit, like he's like overhears the, that and he like drops his his queen of hearts card. So there's, 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 you know, it's kind of fun. It's, it's a little clumsy and yeah, deviant art, <laughs> like fan fiction. But. It, it strikes me as very deviant art. It's not just an X-Men mm. adaptation. This is an adaptation of a children's Saturday morning cartoon from the nineties. And there's a lot of people who are like, it's just like it. It's picking up right where it left off. And I'm like, what when in that show would there have been a scene where Wolverine has to rush Jean Grey to the hospital to have a baby and they would have denied her health care. And so Rogue has to touch the surgeon to get surgeon powers so she can deliver the baby. <laughs> this whole thing is like like from the imagination of someone who didn't work on the original, maybe. Again, I'm not a huge X-Men person. Does can Rogue do do that? <laughs> I thought it was just like mutant powers that she could suck. She's going to like touch Magneto and like grow, grow a dick and then fly at the <laughs> screen. Who cares? Let them be alone for a change. Yeah, some of the animation reminded me of uh, like CDI Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit the close-ups and some of the frame drops it, it's so true like the it's like yeah with some the, it's it's obviously not as bad as that like if you if you watch those uh zelda cdi as a quick aside there's a new game it's like rz the jewel of Faramore. it's on steam i think and it's a game that has the same style as those cdi zeldas it's really cool and they, but they make the game like more tolerable to actually play obviously you don't want it to be a nightmare like those games it's like the same exact kind of cutscenes, and you interact with people it's the same kind of animation and it plays it completely straight i mean it's obviously goofy because they're doing that animation but it's like they don't lampshade it so it's actually like they take it kind of seriously like as if it was produced for like the cdi it's, it's check it out if you want to have a laugh and it's actually kind of fun i showed nina like maybe five minutes of the show because i kept almost telling her about x-men 97 I was like, so X-Men 97. And I just wouldn't know where to start. I don't know how to, I'm like, it's kind of horny and kind of weird and Zelda CDI. Like, I don't know how to talk about it. And so I was like, can I just show you like five minutes of it real quick? And I showed her like the dance sequence where mo capped like Jubilee dancing. Oh yeah, that, that that's jarring and out of place. She watched a little bit of it. And yeah, have you seen Chasing Amy? Kevin Smith's Chasing Amy? Oh, you know what? I haven't. <laughs> so this won't make any sense to you, but it's a really funny thing she said. Joey Lauren Adams plays the, uh, the lead in that. And she plays a lesbian who uh, Ben Affleck falls in love with, and then she kind of goes for it. And it's all about like the sexual politics of that situation. And the premise is that they're both comic book writers. He's doing Dick and fart, like blunt man and chronic style comic books. And she is doing like a very mature sexual politics comic. It's kind of like very metropolitan art style. The book was called uh, idiosyncratic routine. And <laughs> Nina was like, <laughs> This cartoon reminds me of idiosyncratic routine. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it is. But hey, Rotten Tomatoes likes idiosyncratic routine. They don't. They can't tell the difference between that and a '90s kids cartoon. So I, I'm I'm left wondering a couple things. Like, hey, why not just make a new show? Because mm. you are kind of like they obviously want to do something new, but they're tethered to these particular voice actors and this particular style, which is awkward to adapt. I think with modern technology. And there's obviously things about it, like with with Jubilee and with Morph that they didn't want to keep. The original Jean Grey's voice is in it. She plays that Dr. Cooper character. You sound like Charles. He would have been proud today. It's not your fault either. But then they got a new, I, I don't know, younger sounding Jean Grey as the main Jean. Just ever since I was in Gyrick's mind, I've 
Can't shake this feeling that something terrible is coming. So they obviously wanted to like adapt it further. So I'm just left wondering, like, why not? Because there are cool X-Men cartoons. Like a lot of people like X-Men Evolution. I'm the only person in the world who liked Wolverine and the X-Men from like 2011 or so. I think it's a really cool fucking show. I think the animation is, you know, it, it, it is that 2D computer animation style. And I think, I, what, what are the main reasons people critique that show? I guess because it puts, it makes Wolverine the main character. It makes him the, the leader of the X-Men, which is antithetical to like the point of his character. But it opens with a very compelling reason, which is there's like an inciting incident where uh, uh, Xavier's mind goes crazy and he blows up the whole mansion, kind of like in Logan, like similar mm. to what happened in Logan. So he blows up the whole mansion and all the X-Men disperse and Wolverine's on his own and he finds Hank McCoy beast and they rebuild the X-Men together. And then you find out that I think like Xavier telepathically communicate with the past from the future, from the, the troubled future. So then they end up doing days of future past and then mm. they end up doing the Sentinel program because they're like the Sentinel program is here in the future. And then they end up doing Genosha with Magneto because like, meanwhile, Magneto is trying to get mutants to this island of Genosha and they do the Brotherhood of Mutants and they do Wolverine versus the Hulk at one point. They figure out a way to do every major X-Men storyline except for Apocalypse, except for Age of Apocalypse in like one season of TV. They got Nightcrawler in there and they got Scarlet Witch in there and hmm. it's good. It's good. I, I thought it was super good. Like I, I watched it as an adult, whereas, you know, I, I have very fond memories of the original X-Men cartoon. I'd watched the ones that I'm most familiar with. Like there's one where Wolverine lives with the Inuit tribe. He's just, like trying to find himself and like Sabretooth keeps attacking him and he has to like save the village from Sabretooth. This is a good, really good, episode, like a little Dancing with Wolves style episode. But if you dropped me in the middle of season three, four, or five. They were like, watch a random X-Men episode from that time. You know, I wouldn't really love it. Whereas Wolverine and the X-Men, I watched the whole thing like it was 26 episodes or something. I watched the whole thing as if it was a show I enjoyed watching. Since the Fox acquisition, this is the first Disney produced X-Men content. Yeah, pretty... Pretty shocking. <laughs> that, yeah. This is it. Next is Deadpool, I guess. Yeah, I suppose it's a good time to release it, right? Like get people talking, thinking about X Men again. But is Deadpool the best way to get like the X Men into this universe? I don't think so. Just do X Men. Call it X Men. Marvel's X Men. Call it Marvel's X Men. One thing is the sound design is really good in this. <clears throat> the the mixing of the music. I'm thinking about like the first episode where Storm comes in and she's turning the sand into glass with her lightning bolts and that music comes in. I'm like, hell yeah. They definitely, in that original cartoon, they really established a good aesthetic and sound for what X-Men is. That franchise has been running off of those fumes since that cartoon show. I really think so. It would be really cool if they could adapt a lot of classic X-Men stories through this new cartoon show. I don't know. Should they have just recast the whole everybody at this rate? Yeah, because, yeah, because some of them sound too old. (laughs) They sound old and they sound cartoony. And, And this is not a very cartoony cartoon. It could take months, even years to develop a cure. And the virus is already spreading rapidly. There's no time. Yeah, you can't do the Saturday morning cartoon thing with serious storylines. There were times where I was watching, I actually like felt uncomfortable. All the close-ups and like the scenes that were going on too fucking long. And I was like, I, I felt like weird. Beavis and Butthead remains king of the <laughs> 90s cartoon revivals, like by a long shot. I, I love when YouTube feeds me clips from the new show and I just watch them all. There's been a, a bunch of them now where they think that they're experiencing something in like a virtual world, but they're just in the real world. Like the, the one they put on sunglasses and they think it's VR goggles. There's like a guy in the mall selling stuff and they think he's an NPC and they're like asking for their mission <laughs> or they're like we don't know what to do in this game like we should just kill ourselves and then we can restart and they're like getting themselves <laughs> hit by cars <laughs> it's like oh damn it I didn't die yet <laughs> like, like he's got hit me again so I can restart <laughs> Yeah, or like when they they go to the escape room but then they just go into a bathroom it's like yeah <laughs> it looks just like a bathroom hmm interesting this mummy is trickier than I thought. There's so many concepts like that where they, they <laughs> I love when they're walking around the bathroom and they go, <laughs> head goes, all right, let's see here. Hmm. Words. Let's see. Jason, it's balls. But what does it mean? Anytime Butthead like takes control of the situation, like, all right, let's see here. Or uh, uh, like a girl past Beavis, like a love note <laughs> and, he, and he snatches the note away. He goes, let's see here. Hmm. Let me see that Beavis. Let's see here. Hmm. A butt. <laughs> Butthead's going to offer like some understanding. Gene. What's wrong, Gene? Gene. 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 
Jane. 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 Where's Jane? Jane. 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 Jean? 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 Where's Jean? 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 Jean?